it is now slightly more than 40 years since Raila entered into the national politics, national political scene like a colossal. 1982 to 2022, that is 40 years. I do not know of any politician, at least in Kenya, who has been on the political scene for 40 years. There could be, but I am not aware. <clears throat> there are those who started off as youth wingers, councillors and whatever. They have risen to the national level and they have retired. This is the right time for Raila Amolo Odinga to retire from politics. Maybe that is what he's going to do in January. Nobody knows. A lot of things have happened. <clears throat> uh, and uh, as Raila sits down to contemplate retiring, he should think of some of the few that I will record. One, <clears throat> there was Ochuka and Pancras. Ochuka had a diploma in personnel. He was the CMC, private's, uh, private's mess in, uh, in Italy. <clears throat> uh, it, it is the Odinga family that bought him his first vehicle. I don't know whether it was at 60,000 or 40,000. If, if they would have left Ochuka, yes, Ochuka had the complaints because he was a diploma fellow. Those days there used to be only one university in Kenya, two universities. The second Baraton was a private university. There used to be one public university in Kenya and uh, for someone with a diploma, that was very high. Actually, he was a private, but he was more educated than some of his officers whom he was saluting. And for the few years that Moi had taken over, <laughs> tribalism in military promotion was, was seen. But if Raila would not have taken Ochuka out of the barracks, Ochuka would have even been alive today. Many people have died, most of them from his uh, home area. I'm talking of Mbai. I'm talking of... Uh, Mbai was the Dr. Mbai. There is Chris Musando. There is, these are people who paid the ult ultimate uh, price for Raila's political. I keep asking myself, even one person being hurt, is it worth it? Is it worth it for people to die so many, even if you succeed in getting it? Uh, Raila is on record as the only condemned prisoner. There used to be a crime at Kamiti, Shimolatewa and Naivasha, which used to be called Kuiba Jua. Kuiba Jua meant every condemned prisoner would be given, or detainee, condemned or even detainee, political detainee, would be given 30 minutes of sunshine. That is why when uh, Martin Shikuku was in detention, he noticed that the flags were flying at half-mast. And that is when he was told that Jomo Kenyatta died. So that is the only way he could know what was happening. And uh, after 30 minutes, you go back until the following day. Now, what they used to do is after basking in the sun for 20 minutes, you would try to run as far away as possible from the Ascari, so that when they bring you back to the cells, you'll have, you'll have had 15 more minutes of sunshine. But the kind of beatings you'll have received, it is better you get those re beatings and stay in the sunshine. On his part, Raila had been given a few acres of land where he planted, his wife brought him 
fertilizer and seed and uh, Raila planted fertilizer and seed in his uh, shamba uh, when he was released he complained <clears throat> that he was released and left prison and some other people came and ate his how comes that Raila had that rare privilege what many people do not know also is that Raila used to spy on other prisoners used to spy on other prisoners and report to the authorities he even there was a imagine you are a detainee for sedition and then somebody is arrested for sedition you come out of detention and give evidence against him and you go back to so he was a mole multi-party came he gave his father a hard time uh, in 1992 election. These are the times when, you know, the father was the, 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 the VIP in a Ford meeting, but he would come late with the youths, making noise, disrupting the father. I think that is where the misconception of people said that uh, he was cast by his father. Uh, the father died in 1994. In 1997, he betrayed Wamalwa Kijana by running off with many of the Ford Kenya people. He contested as a, he contested under NDP, where he betrayed Stephen Oluthe. He had promised Stephen Oluthe direct uh, selection in uh, Alego Songa, but instead of that, he gave it to Olo Aringo. Uh, when the opposition said that they are going to call for mass action, things that he's now calling against the win of Moi, he went there for cooperation. And then when he came back, when he saw that I had been played by Moi because of uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, he came and wanted to be the vice president. Uh, Mwai Kibaki told him, you, why don't you form a third force? Because we, we, we already we have, we are set. But uh, uh, Madame Gilu, Madame Gilu being a woman, you know, women avoid uh, confrontation. She accepted to give up her prime ministership to him. He was not contented with that. He even went there and said that uh, let uh, um, um, Kibaki be a ceremonial president and him be the executive. Kumbe Mjanja, Upata Mjanja Mwenzake. In the year 2007, we will go by what, we will go by what uh, Krigler said. Krigler said that both sides stole and it is too hard to know which side stole. The only difference is, you see, a place called Nyando, those who voted were 105% of the registered voters. So what the mountain did, they waited for the lake to steal as much as they steal because the mountain had access to the ENSAC. So they knew they were stealing and they waited until all the returns had come from the, from the lake. That is when they came and inflated. A place like Tarakanidhi had 300% turn up. This is a typical Swahili saying that na praguzi. If you stole even one vote, you have no right to complain that these votes were stolen. That is 2007. 2013, the reason why Raila lost 2013 is very easy. He, in as much as every election, Raila brings in new, new votes. But the number that goes away is much more. You see, Rift Valley voted for him in 2007 at uh, over 90%. And then again, in 2013, Rift Valley voted for him less than 5%. Suppose in 2013 he would have retained half, 
let's say 45% of Rift Valley, we would be talking of a different thing. That is 20, 2013. When it comes to 2017, the first thing, it, it is hard to, to remove an incumbency. Uh, 2017, uh, the, the, the government was used against him. And then we come to 2022. After 2017, he lost. He was, play, uh, he was placed in a precarious position. Because one, the swearing in, if you go by law, he could not be charged with treason. But Mama Ida was, uh, was afraid of him being taken again to detention in his age. At the same time, just before the election, you remember Mama Gina, uh, Ruto went to Kabarak and he was turned away. He was not allowed to see Moi. Mama Gina had seen Moi where she was concerned about Ruto. But Moi said that should uh, her action be noticed, obviously, uh, Jubilee will fail. So she was told to keep quiet until after election. So after elections, here was Raila who was headed to. You know the problem is he could not be convicted. But you see this thing of being placed in, in cells and the case takes two to three years uh, with his age. It would be cat, 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 catastrophic. So it was decided, uh, there was, there was uh, Mamangina wanted Ruto out. At the same time, Mama Ida was afraid that uh, uh, Raila would be taken back to detention. So there was want and want. So they met together and Handshake was birthed by these two ladies. But this one also gave Raila a very hard position. One is that uh, the handshake, the handshake uh, gagged him. And again, when it came to BBI, the initial BBI was a bit presentable. But you see, in order to gain more, more support, everybody who came in was promised something until they went beyond the constitution requirement. For example, uh, it was just a very simple thing. And I remember talking to some people and people are telling me, have you been to a law school? Why do we have professors and they agree with it? You see, if you wanted BBI to demarcate constituencies, the same constitution BBI would have said that the it is change, just the way it, the constitution changed the ECK to IEBC. The constitution should also have changed IEBC to IEC, removing the word B for boundaries. Now the constitution says that uh, the boundaries is with IEBC, and it, uh, IEBC has not donated that uh, work of boundaries. It has been snatched by BBI, and then you expect the same, the same uh, constitution to go through. So that is why it failed in the constitutional court. But uh, Raila had discovered from 2005 and uh, 2010 that uh, the side that wins a constitutional, you know the 2005 constitutional change was the banana orange. Uh, then um, the 2010 was uh, yes or no, red and green. So you'll find that the banana orange, the side that won the, the, the referendum, is the side that won the election. The same with the red and black, so the red and green. So it was obvious that uh, BB, the only way to, if, if BBI would have gone through, Raila would have won because of that momentum of, the other thing that killed Raila politically is the handling of central province. Uhuru bulldozed his way. Uhuru bulldozed his way 
and Uhuru never gave back anything. In fact, there is a belief, and I, I, I also share that belief, that Kikuyus make a decision in the last 10 days. So Uhuru, monitor, uh, Uhuru gathered all, all the Kikuyu stations a few days to elections. If Uhuru would have talked sense to Kikuyu slowly by slowly, things would have been different. But uh, what Uhuru did was move the Kikuyu's hatred of the system from point 15 to point four, to minus from minus 15 to minus 45. And that is how Raila lost. I, I do not I do not see him at his age, although I believe Raila is one person who will always contest the president so long as, even from his ICU. But I would request my senior brother to do the greater thing. He should have, I told his uh, intelligence advisor, Patrick Ojuang. Patrick Ojuang was my uh, subordinate in Mandera, an intelligence officer. If Raila would have taken the, if Raila would have waited for the 2010 constitution and said he was retiring together with Kibaki, he would have, he would have gotten a very senior, a very respectable position. Uh, his father, we, we, we claim that Jomo Kenyatta was the father of independence. We also claim that uh, Jaramogi Oginko Dinga is the father of multi-party. Raila would have retired honorably as the father of the new constitution. Now you see, uh, I believe that in the next election, even in the 2022, there is a lot of people who were born after 1982. So imagine, next time Raila will find himself on a ballot paper with people who were born in 1982. That is bad.